If you want to develop an application and deploy that application, the chances are high that you want to persist its data. You want to use the data of that application somewhere. You want to have a state of that application. And you want to show your users the most recent state. So how do you do that? Well, in Kubernetes, you can use volumes. Hello there, and welcome to my channel. For those who are new here, my name is Anais, and this is 100 Days of Kubernetes, the challenge where I am to learn something new related to Kubernetes across 100 days. Today, we're going to learn about volumes. What are volumes? How are they used? What are the problems with volumes? And what happens if we don't use them? Also, what are the different types and how can they solve our problems? Let's get started. So if you're new to my channel, you might not know about this, but I'm keeping all of my notes publicly available on my Notion page. You can access it through devops.anaisurl.com slash Kubernetes. You can access all of my notes here. You can see them here, all of the notes from the previous days. And today we're going to focus on Kubernetes volumes. So we are back on our drawing board. Let's see what volumes actually are and what they do. We have here our Kubernetes cluster. Within our Kubernetes cluster, we have two worker nodes and one main node. Now, in this example, we mainly care about our worker nodes and the pods that are running within our worker nodes. Let's say we have three pods running. They instance one, two, and three of our, oh, that's a nasty three, <laughs> of our application. So we have those. Now, what happens if, let's say, through a ingress or a load balancer or something, you access once this application, you make some changes to it, then you access this application. But, oh, there are no changes. So you're back to the original state of the application. What do you want to do instead? You want to access a persistent state of your application. Makes sense, right? Like if you look at any of the websites, any of the tools that you're using, Twitter, Facebook, I don't know, YouTube, anything they're using, they have a persistent state. So once you make a change to that state, it has a new state. So basically, oops, we have here our first state. Then we make some changes. And that will be our first state, and this is then our second state with those changes. So the first state is empty, and the second state has something written to it. And we want to always, always show the last state that we have. Now, we can have local volumes that help us keep track of the state. Volumes are in its simplest form just references to directories and files that are either within the cluster, your local machine, or remote storage. So, <laughs> I hope that's right. Anyway, <laughs> so we have here our local, let's say we have here our local volumes. Now that doesn't really solve our problem. So let's say you write into this application, into application three, yeah? You make a change. Then every time you access that version of your application, you will see that change. But then once you ac access again, that version, version two, you will not see that change again. You will, you will be reverted to a previous state. You will not see the latest state. Additionally, what happens, and we know that our pods are eth ethermal, ethermal, they die, okay? They die, they die really quickly. Yeah, dead, okay? So <laughs> Kubernetes and some magic within Kubernetes will then spin up a new pod with version two, or in this case, four or whatever of your application. Because you, for example, specified within your replica set that you want to have always running three of those. So you want to have remote volumes. Those could be within your cluster. And then they keep track of the state within your cluster. Now what happens if your entire cluster dies? Or you want to spin up a new cluster because something went wrong and ultimately your cluster shouldn't be something where you consistently work on. No, it should be something you can spin up and kill and spin up. Okay, so <laughs> we have this, okay? So we spin up our new cluster. Just, um, how do I, let's remove it. We spin up our new cluster. Ooh. Okay, this went wrong. So we spin up our new cluster. And we want to have the same number of nodes, worker nodes, and the same number of applications, and so on, right? But once you spin it up again, we will have a new persistent 
well, new volume, a new remote volume in this case, right? And that will be empty and then we will write new versions of it. That wouldn't be much helpful. So we want the volume as a persistent volume to point to some remote storage. This is going to be a database, database, okay? It looks like a ugly mug, but it's a database. So <laughs> we have this now, yeah? We have our persistent volume that points to a location either on your local machine where we can keep the state of our application, of the database, or to maybe your host provider or whatever, right? So ultimately the difference between volumes is mainly how and where the storage is kept. Additionally, our volumes could also point to different resources. So for example, we could allow our volume to make the connection between our um, our application and some resource that we have locally. For example, connect to the Docker socket that we have locally installed. So we could use that as well in that kind of case. Overall, there are about 25 different types of volumes that we could be using. And it really depends on your use case, which one you want to use, which one you want to have a look at. So I highly suggest you to take a look at the official doc Kubernetes documentation to, to see which one is best for your case. Okay, so over here on the screen, we can see a pod creation, some Kubernetes resources defined within YAML. As you can see, the name of that pod or like what's happening here is empty directory. Now within that, we run two containers. First container is busybox A, and the second one is busybox B. And both of them mount to this volume that's created here, which is basically just an empty directory where we can maybe write some content to. So this is all a local volume, right? So it's only accessible within those containers, like within that pod to those containers where we create the volume. So let's go ahead and create it with kubectl, create, and then volume one YAML. Now it's created. We can check it with kubectl, get pods. Now, as you can see here, it's currently creating the containers. Okay, so now we have both containers already. Now we want to write on them. And we're going to do that with kubectl, exa, and then we want to write hello world into a file of in that cache directory. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And now we, as you can see here, we wrote it into container busybox A and to that volume, like using that container, uh, which is connected to that volume. Now I'm going to show you how you can also access it through container B because both of them ultimately run in the same pod. So both of them have access to that volume that we have created. Okay, so we go ahead and now it's going to tell us what's written in that container, which is hello world. Ta -da. <laughs> now let's have a look how to create a persistent volume of sorts. So we are going to look tomorrow more about it, but here I've created another pod that basically spins up one container called busybox and with the image from busybox and then it's going to connect to our safe data volume and Basically, the mount path is going to be slash data. So that's where we want to write information in. Now, if we go ahead and create this, the kubectl create and then volume two, it's going to create it. Now we can watch the creation of kubectl get pods and the container is being created. Once it's created, we can write something into the volume. Now the container is created. So let's go ahead and do kubectl x. And then we want to write into our host path pod that basically uses the container busybox. We want to write into busybox and say, hello world. Okay. So this is within a different container to the one we just created, not the one before. Then we can hit and write into it. Now, if I go ahead and I say kubectl and then exec host path, and then we just want to basically within that resource, we want to check what's written within that file, it returns hello world. Now let's create, uh, let's delete that container. 
let's kill it off because we know that birds are never long lived so we want to simulate what happens if it dies what happened to our data right okay now right now it's completely deleted so we can go ahead and create it again volume two now it's created cube kernel get pods now we can watch that it's being created this is a new spin up of the same container just remember that and we want to access the same data that we had before so now our container is running or pod is running with the container in it and now we can look for cube kernel exec and we want to see what's in that file if it's still there and here we go here's still our hello world even though the container died and we spend it up again this is it for today tomorrow we're gonna look at persistent volumes and volume claims in more detail as well as what are those different types of volumes used for how to use them and so on now if you watch this far it must be that you're serious about learning kubernetes and maybe more about devops so you might want to join our devops learning group link below is my twitter just message me and i can add you we are just supporting each other's learning journey sharing free online resources and more so if this was useful please hit like and subscribe to my channel to support this channel and i really hope to see you next time have a lovely day bye bye